the biggest issue for e-commerce sellers right now is going to be that there's no conversion value tracking. So you can't tie a direct ROI to it. You can't say I spent X and made Y. We interrupt this program to bring you this important message. Welcome to Marketing Interruption, a daily podcast powered by Blue Tusker that interrupts your day with marketing news, tips and strategies from an entrepreneur who lives and breathes marketing. Now, let the interruption begin with your host, Andrew Maff. Hello and welcome to episode number 53 of the Marketing Interruption podcast. Today, I'm going to talk to you about TikTok advertising and what it means for e-commerce sellers. So, this one's very interesting. TikTok is clearly a hot topic. As we're talking right now, Oracle is their uh, tech partner, but no one has officially bought them yet. Um, but by the time this podcast actually comes out, who the hell knows? Um, so we started to use it. We have decided that we will obviously offer our services for paid advertising on TikTok, but we decided that the organic posting in TikTok, at least for e-commerce sellers, just wasn't something that we thought we could do well enough at a low enough rate for it to be worth it, especially considering it's such a brand new platform and no one has really figured out what's working great. Um, as a side note for what we suggest is uh, we'll typically give some guidance on content types and things like that, but we actually think that it's nice to be more of a personalized uh, platform where it's actually used in the office by employees and they all just do their different TikTok dances and stuff like that. So that way you can still hop on trends and you can kind of keep it branded and keep it a little more fun, but I see it as a, a better personalized place, but I digress. So the advertising. Uh, benefit to it, the user experience of the whole back end is great. There's, It's super easy, it's very clean, it's very understandable, the reporting is beautiful. Um, so whoever did their UX, fantastic. The issue I had in the beginning when we first started doing this was the setup wasn't as simple as they made it out to be. There's some issues with the pixel and the audiences where the pixel will take up certain events. It will say, you know, X amount of uh, product page views or X amount of added to cart or anything like that. But then you go to create an audience and it's not showing that same amount, which causes an issue in who you can actually exclude or who you can create a look like audience with or anything like that. And since I wanted to touch on the basics, let me dive back into that real quick. The audiences are almost the exact same as Facebook. So you can do lookalikes, you can create custom audiences, you can upload um, certain, uh, uh, you can't upload email lists, but there's, uh, I forgot what the file's called, but you can upload certain customer lists. Um, so it's very, very similar to Facebook. In fact, there's actually some other targeting that they have where essentially you can get more content specific about like, not the uh, not the person who posted it, but the content that was created based on the hashtags and things like that. You can get that specific to that piece of content as well as specific to who liked it or targeting who commented or who shared or one of each or none of them. Um, so you can get very granular in terms of who you're targeting. And then they also have categories and things like that that aren't as in-depth as Facebook, but they're pretty in-depth. So there's some pros and some cons to the different types of targeting that you can do. Um, but in my opinion, the targeting is great, especially for a platform that is relatively new. Um, but the biggest issue for e-commerce sellers right now is going to be that there's no conversion value tracking. So you can't tie a direct ROI to it. You can't say I spent X and made Y. The only way you can do that is through Google Analytics. And I would suggest doing it through a UTM code through Google Analytics because the issue we had in the beginning, we first started doing this which I would say we first started doing TikTok ads. What is it? It is September. In the beginning, it was probably January or February, I think, when we started doing this. And we we had an issue where essentially the conversion value wasn't showing, which we found out later was just never going to show. And then the other issue was, oh, that the traffic just wasn't showing at all. TikTok was showing you've had 100, 300 clicks, which means 100, 300 some odd people went to the website and they would go to Google Analytics and there'd be nothing. And then we would go to Shopify and there'd be nothing. Even today, we still have the issue where it's not showing up in Shopify. And my thought is because Shopify just hasn't implemented that type of reporting for TikTok to be just shown yet. 
is my assumption, but some of them it shows, some of them it doesn't, but I'm not going to get in there. Um, so, so there's a bit of an issue there. The other side of, of the problem is, is the bidding. So you don't always, you don't bid like you would in Facebook. You don't say, here's my budget, surprise me. You actually kind of bid on, on what it is you're targeting. So if you're targeting traffic, you bid on clicks. If you're targeting conversions, you bid on a, a CPA. And the problem is that when you first launch a campaign, it will say, based on what we see right now, you should be bidding X. And it won't increase your bidding for you. So you have to go in and check. So we were on a daily basis of checking what should our bid be, what should our bid be, what should our bid be, it was all the time, to a point where in, if you don't have enough data coming in from the conversions, you actually now have to go back and change your bidding all the time, and it's just going to consistently increase your CPA target. So. We had uh, one of those issues where you kind of want to start further up the funnel. So we would start with traffic targeting. We would change it to targeting add to cart, and then we would change it to conversion targeting. And that's kind of been where we've seen a lot of the benefit. Um, however, so far, the results we've gotten have been mixed. We've had a couple sellers where it worked really well, and it's a nice channel for them. It's not Facebook. It's not uh, YouTube in some cases, not Google. But we, we have had some success with it. We've had some others where we've gotten great branding out of it. We had a great reach and the cost per click is like nothing, but the conversion rate's just not there. And we've gone through the typical, like maybe it's the wrong audience, maybe it's the wrong content. We've been testing that stuff and we've been tweaking, but we're also learning that even if you target that older audience in TikTok, it is still a very different type of user experience on this platform where people are really there to just blank out and siphon through videos that they think are funny and the way to get rid of an ad is very simple obviously in facebook you can just scroll past it and same with instagram you can just scroll past it and tiktok you can also just scroll past it so if you don't catch their um their eye within seconds they're gone so we've kind of said with e-commerce sellers who haven't done it yet tread lightly give it a try keep the budget relatively low our favorite is to, if you're going to do like a really minimal test, just start at like $100 a day for a couple of weeks and see, see if it brings in anything or even enough data for you to kind of decipher what it is. Um, I don't know what the minimum is. I think actually it's $50 a day, I think is the minimum that you can do on TikTok to, to test. Um, I'm always a fan of testing something. You, you can't say it doesn't work until you've tested it. But I would say tread lightly. There's still some areas where they need some work. They, I would love conversion value tracking because I want to know what the ROI is for obvious reasons. Um, but that would be my suggestion if you're looking to try it out. Those are the basics. One of these podcasts, I'll dive deeper into what works and what doesn't. But if, for the basics, start a low budget, test it out, see how it goes. And that's all I have for today. So I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you for joining us for today's marketing interruption. Make sure to rate, review and subscribe to the show. And don't forget to email marketinginterruption at bluetusker.com with any marketing questions you'd like to have answered on the show. And head over to marketinginterruption.bluetusker.com to catch up on past episodes. Until next time. We now return you to your regularly scheduled programming.